So let's have a talk about digital research assistants because they are here. There are two of them. There is Google for the low price of $20 a month. You can have your own research assistant. And there's OpenAI, which only charges $200. So is it 10 times better? Yes, it is. That doesn't mean the Google version isn't useful, but it seems way more prone to give a high level overview instead of, as the name implies, going deep. Furthermore, the reports generated by the Deep Research Assistant are always fairly engaging, maybe oddly so. They're always interesting. I want to read what it has to say. So we'll get into OpenAI here in a moment, but that's the TLDR. The short version is the OpenAI version seems significantly better, and the Google version seems a bit lackluster by comparison. But the Google version is still using Google's last model, last generation. They just came out with their new Gemini 2.0 model pretty recently as I make this video. And so it's quite possible that their deep research assistant will get combined with Gemini 2.0, which might make it more powerful. The biggest thing that stands out about this is that they use the O3 model. O3 being this model that doesn't exist yet for the rest of us, it is only accessible via this deep research feature. You cannot choose it from the dropdown in ChatGPT. So they have this O3 model, and supposedly this model is just good at its job. If its job is doing research online, it can read web pages, it can do data analysis, etc. because no one actually knows how good it is outside of OpenAI. That being said, the reviews of O3 Mini, which just came out recently, it's the miniature, less powerful version of this model, have been pretty positive. That is the big selling point of OpenAI's deep research, is that you get access to O3, albeit indirectly. And of course, they're putting this into the $200 a month plan, which also includes a number of other things. It includes access to the O1 Pro model mode, which so far seems to be the best at reasoning, although it is very slow. They also give you a whole lot of credits on Sora if you want to go create some videos. And they give you access to uh, O1 in an unlimited capacity, along with now the O3 mini model. You get the high reasoning mode where it assumedly spends more compute, where it tries harder to solve your problem. You can use that also in an unlimited capacity. And now you get access to Deep Research Assistant. Mm -hmm. Here's the UI for the Deep Research Assistant. It is just the same UI you're already used to in ChatGPT, but they give you a new button down here. New button, there it is. Let's toggle that. And that effectively nullifies the 4.0 model up here in the corner. All right, it's gonna ask me for clarification. I will clarify and probably just say, yes, give me everything you're suggesting. And then we'll see how it does. Okay, so that's off and away. It'll go do its research. This is sort of an extension of AI search as an idea. This is just more of an in-depth search and it takes longer and it goes and finds more information. But the idea is the same. You can reduce the risk of hallucination and reduce the impact if it does happen by having the AI cited sources, and that's exactly what the AI search is. So deep research is essentially an extension of AI search and just searches more. So what are the potential problems with this? Well, one is that you simply don't know what it's missing. You don't know what information it didn't find or if it did find, it didn't cite. So you ultimately have to use your own judgment here, but that's always been the case with these large language models, and it still is. All right, that is all for now. I will see about reorganizing all this information to give it a bit more structure, make it a bit less off the cuff. All right, see you next time.